Hello there, Pete Menefee. Hi, how are you? I'm doing very well. I'm so honored to have you on GG. Uh-huh. That's me and the 561 podcast today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, before we get into our chat, I need to tell our listeners. So everyone pull up a chair because <laughs> this man has such a career that it's unbelievable. Um, you are, uh, he is a, a master of his craft in costume design. But before reaching the age of 26, I believe, he already had two careers. Pete already had two careers. Pete Menefee had a career as a dancer and as an actor. And then changed careers into a award-winning, may I say, costume design with three primetime Emmy wins. And just trying to capsule Pete, your career is really impossible to do. But before we before we get into the, the, the costuming that just is unbelievable, your genius period. But um I want to talk about your the first part of your career we, that you left at such a young age, but you were a dancer and an actor. Yeah, I was. I was. Uh actually I've been I've been very, very lucky in my life. Uh I've I have only worked in show business, uh, except for mowing lawns when I was 12 and 13. <laughs> I, uh, I got my equity card at 14. Wow. Uh, there was a lot of summer stock here in, in California, and um, um, I could sing and I could dance and I could act a little. So uh, I started working really as, as, uh, as children. I was small for my age, and uh, I played I played kids and then graduated to teenagers and uh, did a lot of shows. I auditioned. I was I was asked uh, to come and audition for the movie of West Side Story that Jerry Robbins was choreographing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think he did my dancing because the first thing he gave were ballet combinations. And I'm uh, I'm a good tap dancer, but I, I kind of stink at, at ballet. And uh, uh, but the casting people kept putting me back in every time he'd cut me. And uh, uh, so I, I ended up staying all the way through the audition and then read for Robert Wise, the director. Ah, oh, impressive. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I, you know, I was I was like 16 years old. I didn't know who any of those people were. Probably I, for the better. I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because the, uh, when we did our first ballet combination, uh, he cut me uh, right away, uh, you know, because I, I was rotten. I, my feet weren't pointed, uh, you know. I I was just I... terrible, <laughs> and uh, the casting guy made him put me back in. And we did the combination again. And and Mr. Robbins walked over to me and he said, uh, "How long have you danced?" And I said, six years." And he said, "Well, what kind of dancing did you do?" And I said, um, "I did tap." I took tap lessons. Uh, I'm a tap dancer. Well, I had no idea that Jerry Robbins, Jerome Robbins, loathed uh, tap dancers. Uh oh. (laughs) And from then on, (laughs) in the audition, uh, every time he'd he'd press four of us together or three of us together to do combinations for him, he would say, uh, um, "Where's the tap dancer? Put the tap dancer in the middle." (laughs) And I had I had no idea that he was kind of being nasty. (laughs) And uh, the tap dancer got in the middle and did his damnedest. <laughs> but but uh, it was a uh, and and auditioning for that got me into the national company. I didn't get the film. Elliot Elliot Feld, who's a brilliant dancer, uh, did the part that I did. But they asked me to uh, come into the into the national company to replace whoever I had replaced Elliot. I think uh, um, so. I started. With with touring with Westside, and in the middle of my contract, um, a talent scout from uh, Columbia Pictures uh, saw the show and came back and talked to me and said, "We'd like you to audition for Bye Bye Birdie." Uh huh. Uh, you know, a, a Hollywood yeah. job. So, yeah. So uh, I, I quit West Side Story in the middle of my contract, and everyone was very pissed at me. I bet. But. Uh, 
but I I auditioned uh, for uh, for Anne Margaret's boyfriend. Uh, I did a a, a, a film audition uh, for the part that Bobby Rydell ended up doing, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, they cast me as as Harvey Johnson in it. Unforgettable, uh, unforgettable. Yeah, Can yeah, you, that's, fun, yeah. Funny, mm-hmm. it's funny. Yeah. Uh, I was 18 in the movie. 18. You have been working forever because you took for, your yeah. first tap lessons at age 10 and by what, 14, and, and you began to teach younger kids. And then by 14, you, you, you've been working ever since, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, and I, you know, I was very lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. Um, I looked uh, young, so I did uh, stuff like uh, Dick Clark's Where the Action Is. Yeah, of course. Series. Yeah. And ended up choreographing that and appearing on it. And, um, but, I, I just worked all the time. I did a lot of movies. Uh, you when did. I, this yeah. summer I was 21. I went from being a chimney sweep in Mary Poppins to a garbage man in My Fair Lady. <laughs> <laughs> it's it was very, a, very it was impressive. A great, great summer. It was a great summer. You but I are a standout on screen because you really are. I mean, um, you're you have such presence and you have great hair. Your hair is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I still have it, but it's all gray now. You do. You still have great hair. But you have, in the movies, you have worked with legends. I mean, up and down that scale. I mean, from Elvis and Mark, but yeah. Audrey Hepburn and Julie Andrews. I mean, wow. Pete, how yeah, did you keep your yeah. head on your shoulders as such a young person working with these iconic directors and, and actors? Well, you know, they're all they're all just jobs. Uh, in Somebody was asking me about Poppins the other day, and I said, you know, it was just my summer job that year. Oh, and, uh, wow. I was happy to have it. But you never know um, you never know that something is going to turn out to be um, like Viva Las Vegas. You know? Yeah, yeah. It, it was, uh, it was I, I did, I think, three weeks on it at MGM, and it was three paychecks. And uh, I had worked with Anne Margaret before, so uh, I, I knew her. And Elvis was very nice to work with. Very, was he? yeah, he was a real, real gentleman, a real Southern guy. He, everything was, ma'am and sir, and huh. not at all, not at all like you'd expect him to be. No, it or, isn't. Uh, the nicest guy, and a hard worker. Always, always knew his stuff. He knew his lines. He, he knew his blocking. I did five movies with him. Well, I'm telling you, Viva Las Vegas is another, you know, just iconic film in general because it was electric. All of the dancing, not just the two of them, which just together left off the screen, but the whole film, all of the dancers, there are certain scenes in that and the and the and the uh, costuming of of you know some of the some of the things that even like just and Margaret when she comes out with that swimsuit and stuff it's just uh, yeah, such a great yeah. film. Yeah, she's, she's a knockout. That was a very very good period for her. Oh, uh, was still it still beautiful? But you know that was there. There are a lot of movies that she is you know so stunning in, and she's a good actress. You know she is. She really she is. is. People yeah. people kind of dismissed her as a lightweight early in her career, but you know if if you if you've ever seen her do Streetcar Named Desire, uh huh, uh, yeah, car, carnal knowledge. You know, Unbelievable she, uh, in carnal uh, knowledge. Unbelievable yeah. performance. Yeah, that really took my breath away when I saw uh-huh. it. I was, I yeah. Was, that was very unexpected. It uh, really, really was. I mean, but, um, but you, being a, a chimney sweep, I mean, you, you did, <laughs> it's such a, it, that's such an interesting arc there because you were in two movies that were a bit, I don't want to say controversial. I'm not sure what the word is, but because of the Julie Andrews, Audrey Hepburn oh, tie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you were in both of those films. Yeah, and it was funny because uh, I had I I I got the audition for uh, Fair Lady first. I got that job first, and I had a start date on the first day that they were shooting on uh, on August 3rd, and then. Uh, um, about a week after I got it, a good friend of mine, uh, who I who I had uh, 
toured with in West Side Story, and I actually had grown up with with Phil Laughlin in San Diego, and we we'd, we'd uh, studied uh, ballet together. Uh, and Phil was assisting Mark Bro and Dee Dee Wood, the choreographers, on a, a film at Disney. And Phil called and said, uh, "There's an audition uh, tomorrow, and you've got to come." He said, "You're you're perfect for it. Uh, they want dancers who can tumble." And uh, you know, I, I said, oh, well, what is it? And he said, uh, it's it's based on the Mary Poppins books. Well, I'd, I'd never heard of the Mary Poppins books. Right. So uh, I, I went to that audition, and I got it. And uh, I, I said to Aditi, uh, I'm, I'm afraid I can't do this job. I have to start My Fair Lady on August 3rd. And Didi said, oh, we'll be done way before that. <laughs> well, we weren't. And oh, yeah. uh, so uh, I reminded them uh, at the end of July, I said, you know, next Monday, I, I'm I'm going to be out of here. And they said, well, that's OK. There's there's only one thing to film. It was the interior of the bank's house. Mm-hmm. And um, I said, well, thanks. And uh, then I asked the other guys, there were 12 of us, uh, please not to tell Julie where I was going. <laughs> And of yes. course, one of one of them did. And, uh, they ratted you out. They did. They did. Sure, they really did. Oh and, no! Yeah. On on uh, Thursday, um, I had to I I had to leave on Friday, and on Thursday she came out of makeup, and I was going into makeup, and she passed me, and uh, and uh, she swore. She said, "You effing traitor." <laughs> oh, that had to make you feel really good. Oh God, I thought, how am I going to live through the next two oh, days? Wow, you know? what a and, burn! Oh, yeah. But then, on the other hand, when I went to Fair Lady, we the first thing we did was pre-record, and uh, Audrey did her own singing at that point. She hadn't been looped yet, and uh, one day in rehearsal, uh, the sound guy for who knows what reason, I think he, he thought it was a joke, put Julie Andrews' recording yeah. of Wouldn't It Be Loverly oh. on. Oh, oh, and oh. Of course, I knew right away because the the first two people that sing in it are two of the of the coster mongers. And uh, when I heard it, I thought, well, that's it. And the orchestrations are the same. When I heard it, I thought, well, that's not Ben's voice. And then I heard Julie's voice. Oh, and Audrey wow. didn't realize it at first, but it took her about eight bars of music to uh, realize what the guy had done, and she just walked off the set. Oh, she didn't think it was funny. Oh, no, not, not she was pissed. Oh, you know, yeah. So, so they both they both were uh, touchy about the situation. Oh, but, yeah. But, you know, it, it all turned out great because, uh, you know, Julie got the Oscar, and Audrey right. was wonderful in the movie, and, you know. Woo, I, I, woo. You know, and at that point, Julie was... Uh, uh, a kind of a, a unknown. I mean, she'd exactly. start on Broadway, yeah. but uh, she wasn't, uh, I guess to Jack Warner's view, she wasn't somebody who could bring an audience in. She wasn't a recognized star, although she certainly yeah. became one. Well, who can but, ever uh, forget her, her Oscar-winning uh, speech, uh, Julie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, yeah, it was, uh, it was very memorable. You yeah. have also... Um, flown because you you have done so much um touring and 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 a lot of stage work um in peter pan you yeah yeah and so not only did you jump down a chimney which had to be terrifying (laughs) in mary i mean seriously dance dance and then down a chimney and then flying um terrifying yeah well i I was i was uh i think 15 uh, when i started doing peter pan and Peter Foy, uh, who f- flew Mary Martin on Broadway, was flying all of us. And, of course, <laughs> the first thing they told us after we were in our harnesses and all hooked up was, uh, now, whatever whatever you do, don't let your wires touch or they'll both break. Oh, good. <laughs> and I went, what? <laughs> what, did he, what did he say? <laughs> I, it, it freaked me right out. But, you know, once we started doing it, and it was very choreographed, it was, it was easy. Yeah. Um, 
jumping down the chimney was not easy though that just sounds absolutely terrifying to me yeah, it mean. really it real it really was and it's funny when i saw the second mary poppins uh there were so many cuts and so much ctg uh you know special effects stuff and i thought yeah. god you know we never had any of that everything we did in the film we did you know. you know, and I know that's dangerous for, you know, people like you executing those moves. But yeah. for us, you know, the audience, knowing that it's real is significant. I mean, to me, I just. I think I think you can feel the energy. I really yeah, do. I do, too. I absolutely do. But you toured so much with West Side Story. You were just working or just a workaholic. You paid your own way from a very young age. You bought your yeah. own first car. You you know, you were sort of a teen, but you were functioning, uh, paying your, an paying your own way. Yeah, no, exactly. I was, I was an adult, yeah. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, happy, and happy to be like that, you know. I, um, I, I wasn't really, my parents were supportive, but I wasn't really pushed by my parents. I kind of made my own way. And, I was uh, wondering about that because uh, many, many young performers are it, it seems and yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, to, to have supportive parents that's one thing and th- that's wonderful but to do things that maybe you don't really want to do but you wanted to do it all and and oh, yeah. did and yeah. you you well in that time frame the movies that you were in it's i want to encourage everyone to to uh when we move we're about to move on to into the economy to to look at Pete Menefee, um, not just in Internet Movie Database, but many other places, because Pete, your career, it just, it made me tired trying to research you. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I was really, really lucky. Uh, uh, all, I, I always have been. And, well, uh, but uh, Pete, I, I'm sorry. Yes, perhaps you were in the right place, mm, but you are an absolute genius. I'm, I'm telling you, look, no, seriously, you don't have to respond to that, but you <laughs> just are. I mean, with your, once you moved, made that career change into yeah. costume design, Pete, you are an artistic genius. I mean, you just, your designs on the page are unbelievable, but then to see them, and I want to ask you Something how to yeah, yeah. What was the? Do you remember? Because you you've been at uh, well, doing it for well, so you know, long. Well, the, the wild thing was, uh, I I drew before I went to school. My mom taught me to read uh, before I went to school, and uh, I always drew. I could draw anything, and I used to go to see Disney movies, and you know, come home and draw all the characters, and then make little theaters and stick the little characters in the little theater. <laughs> I mean, I, I did that. that I did that my whole life, but I never took art in school and uh, uh because you were I born never, with I, it, Pete. I never I never imagined that my ability to draw uh would end up making my living for me. I really didn't. And uh, and I I stopped dancing because uh I I really I really played kids most of the time, and I, I got to the age about 25 where uh, I couldn't see any future in it. I, mm-hmm. I I didn't think I was going to look old enough to do older roles for a bit, and uh, and I, you know, I I, I didn't want to be the world's oldest teenager, <laughs> and I didn't think anybody would hire me at that point. So um, a friend of mine. Uh, who 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 was a designer, a puppet designer for the Crofts, saw sketches of mine. I was working in split pen and ink at that point. And uh, he said, God, he said, did you draw those? And I said, yeah, I did. And uh, Tony said, how would you like to work as a sketch artist? And I said, I don't know. What does a sketch artist do? And Tony explained that a lot of designers didn't draw. And... Uh, uh, they used somebody else. They would tell them what they wanted, and then the sketch artist would draw it. I didn't know that. So, yeah, I didn't know it either. I mean, and I'd been in the business my whole life at that point. Right. But uh, so he said, well, come come and work this weekend at the Crofts, and uh, um, and we'll pay you $500. Yes. Thought, For two days' work. 
I mean, that was what I was paid to dance on on the chimneys of London <laughs> and tumble <laughs> and jump down chimneys. We were all paid. We were all paid a flat five hundred a week for the, ah. for the show. And I thought, well, that sounds great. So mm-hmm. I did it. And uh, Tony showed me how to paint with gouache that weekend. And I, you know, I I could just do it. I mean, it was you certainly it was, can. It was so easy for me. And then after I had drawn for people for a little bit, Tony said, you know, you're you're really good at this. And he said, and you have good ideas, so you should do what Bob Mackey did. Mm-hmm. And I said, what's that? And he said he went to Chouinard Art Institute, where uh, if you're a costume major, you learn how to make clothes because I couldn't sew. Yeah. And, uh, I, and I didn't know how stuff went together. So I took the uh, Jonathan Winters variety show for two years. And uh, uh, on Monday and Tuesday, I went to night school at Chenard. And Wednesday, we did a run-through. On Thursday, we did a camera blocking. And on Friday, we shot the Jonathan Winter show. And I did that for two years. And um, I, I learned at Chenard, I learned how to draft patterns and, and I really how to put stuff together to yeah. drape, how to construct. And uh, the minute I was done with it, I put a portfolio together. And I went around to uh, to everybody uh, I'd worked for, all the producers, and I said, you know, I've been going to Chenard, and I want to be a costume designer, and this is what I do. And I'd put together a little variety show with uh, a sketches, uh, with a host and a hostess and guest stars and dancers and stuff. And I took my dog and pony show around to everybody. And through that, I got um, a job assisting uh, – Rhett Turner at NBC, one a wonderful, wonderful guy and designer. And uh, the second day I was there, he said, do you draw? And I said, yeah, I draw. And he said, okay. And he sat down and we started working on some stuff. And uh, everybody else coming over and looking at the stuff. And at the end of the job, they offered me uh, the job as staff sketch artist yeah. at NBC. And they offered it to me because the lady who was the staff sketch artist was just getting ready to have her baby. She'd been pregnant. Oh. So talk about timing. Timing, right. Yeah. That talent, you know, that thing called talent uh, yeah. got you there. And, yeah. And I did that. I drew for everybody except Laugh-In. I drew the Andy Williams show, uh, the Jerry Lewis show, uh, Dean Martin show, the Bob Hope specials. And I used to have to take work home on Mondays to, you know, get everything drawn so they could get in, into work by Tuesday. And uh, at one point, Angie, who was the head of wardrobe, Angie Jones, uh, called me in her office and she said, "I've shown your sketches to Edith Head. And <gasps> she'd like oh. you, to, yeah, and she'd like you to assist her on a Debbie Reynolds special." Oh, Pete. And I thought, oh, man, eat a head, you know. Yeah. And I thought, this is my ticket to uh, designing movies. And so I came in the next day, and I worked with Edith. She was lovely. And uh, I drew, a, I did about eight sketches for her. And then when I went home that night, I was so up that I did, we had talked about the whole show, that I drew eight more. You know, and I thought, you know, if she doesn't like them, I'll redraw them. And if she likes them, you know, she'll be impressed. So I came in the next morning with all my sketches, and Angie called me in the office, and she said, uh, come in and sit down. She Uh-oh. said, Edith, Edith quit yesterday. <gasps> what? I went, what? Oh, God, I was so depressed. And she said, uh, but do you have your sketches with you? And I said, yeah. And I said, and I did eight more uh, just to show Edith what I thought they should be and and she looked at them and she called the producer and she said he wants to meet you and take your sketches oh. so uh, I you know I put my sketches together and drove over, over to Bob's office and uh, I showed the sketches to him and explained that the second eight were were not Edith's ideas uh, they they were just stuff that I'd drawn and he looked at me and said, how would you like to design the special? <laughs> and I almost fell off the chair. Oh, you know, right. I was 26 yeah. years old, so I said, yeah. oh, yeah, sure, I'd love to. 
<laughs> uh, I wasn't what, scared about it or anything. I was too stupid. What a story. What yeah. really, truly a story that yeah. is. So my first special was uh, uh, with uh, Debbie Reynolds and 300 children oh, in, God. San Diego, in San Diego <laughs> in my old, old stomping grounds in Balboa oh. Park. Yeah, because you're originally from San Diego. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh. and it was wow. uh, it was it was wild. Uh, Debbie opened uh, MGM Studios had closed by then, but she opened part of the wardrobe uh, room for me, and provided me with uh, cutters and stitchers and a milliner and you know everything I needed. Uh, to do, to do special, so. How long does it take from conception to to, to you know <laughs> execute? You're well, laughing. That's an impossible laughing. question, isn't it? No, it isn't an impossible question because most of the stuff that I did was TV variety, which was really hot at that point. And you you would come in on Monday, and you'd have a, an eight o'clock in the morning production meeting usually, and you'd find out what you were doing that week. And you were shooting on Friday. Oh. So it means you had okay. to, yeah, you had that's... to sit down and, and draw on Monday and start doing your fabric shopping. And then Tuesday, everything would have to go into the shop because by Wednesday late, you'd be fitting, starting to fit people. And uh, and you'd finish the clothes on Thursday, and then Friday you had to, you did a dress rehearsal, and then you shot. So it was like being shot out of a cannon, oh, and yeah. that was mainly what I did. Uh, you know, I did uh, uh, the Hollywood Palace that I had danced on for the first five years. I did. I designed the ninth year of it, and uh, I did the Pearl Bailey show. I did specials with Gene Kelly. Uh, uh, you know, but it was all it was all fat. And at one point, uh, I did a show that I won my first Emmy for. It was called The Big Show. It was only on one season. But it was an hour and a half to two hours of entertainment every week. And after we did the pilot for it, everybody was freaking out, you know, because it, I mean, it took us two weeks to do the pilot. Wow. And uh, so Nick Vanoff, uh, who who had also produced The Hollywood Palace, um uh, decided that he would double all of us. The uh, directors would double, the art directors would double, the choreographers would double, uh, the scenic guys would double, and he wanted to double me. And I, I, I took Nick aside and I said, you know, let me try it for a couple of weeks. I think I can do it. I really do. And, uh, and I did. They never doubled me. Uh. I did everything, but they... they uh, <laughs> Nick would come to me at the end of the production meeting on Monday, and we we were shooting on Friday with the flop over day of Saturday, and he would say, "What can we shoot first? You know, because it there were so many clothes to make. Yeah, oh there my was gosh. so much stuff. I had incredible assistance wow. on it. I had a, a a key guy named Alan Alan Trugman, who who helped me live through so many huge shows. I mean, Alan was my assistant on on uh, the unveiling of the Statue of Liberty, and that was another one where I was so greedy. Uh Gary Smith <laughs> Gary, I was I was really crazy. Uh Gary Smith was going to produce the opening and uh another producer was doing the the closing ceremonies and they both asked me to do them. And I didn't want to I didn't want to have to make a decision. So I said to the exec producer at Warner's, I said, let me try to do both of them, you know. And um, I said, you know, I'll let you know if I'm in trouble, but I, I, think, I, I think I could probably do it. And, uh, uh, and he agreed. It was David Wolper. And David <sighs> said, uh, oh, okay, you know, go ahead and try it. Because uh, he had seen Big Show, and he, he knew that I could handle a lot of stuff. Yeah. And uh, the opening show that Gary Smith and Dwight Hemian did had uh, 3,000 dancers and singers. I had Barishnikov. I had Shirley uh, MacLaine. Wow. I had Neil Diamond, I, you know, and they'd, they'd have these cores of dancers. And you know, that was a big show. And then Gary came to the closing and he almost fainted. 
because I did four, over 14,000 costumes. For oh, my God. Oh, that's unbelievable. I mean, a lot of them were mupples, uh, like uh, 2,000 girls wow. tap dancing with Liza Minnelli in New York, New York. Wow. But it was... And it was so wild because I was in the in the booth, of course, watching it. Of course. With the director, everybody. And the things, the show started, and all of a sudden I thought, oh, my God, what if there's a wardrobe problem? <laughs> you know, because once the, once the rock is rolling down the hill, <laughs> the game is over. You know, right. if you're, you, you have to. You have to just watch it. And fortunately, we never had a problem. Oh, but it God. was a it was a gigantic show. I had you know it was so big. It was held in the stadium in New Jersey, and uh, oh. uh, except for the two hundred dancers and two hundred rock dancers that we had, everybody else had been given their costume at the at the fitting. Uh, you know they had to wait until it was altered. And then we would give them their costume, and they came in buses. You know, all the rock cats and stuff would come wow. in buses to tap in back of Liza Minnelli. And then when the job was over, they'd get back on the bus and go away. And then all our square dancers would be bussed <laughs> in because they had no place to put everybody. Unbelievable. There were thousands of thousands of people. Wow. And, you know, and a lot of stars, Gene Kelly and, uh, and uh, Shirley MacLaine and Liza Minnelli, and uh, you know, it was it was an enormous job. In your resume, it's really almost easier to say to name people that you have not worked with. <laughs> right? It, no, it really, really is yeah. because you are all across the spectrum of as uh, just from A to C. I mean, and and one of just real quick, I, I just have to say one of my favorite costumes. It's really simple. It's that Shirley MacLaine with the hat and the oh, the, and the, yeah, the leotard. I love yeah, that, that was so her, much. That was her basic leotard for the for the whole act. Everything went on over that. But and, you have uh, worked. I mean, at the same time on multiple shows, you have you have like in Internet Movie Database, you have forty one credits, and that what I mean by that to those listening yeah. is forty one different. Productions, in other words, that doesn't mean yeah. forty-one things that you did. That's and forty-one. They, yeah. Right. And so. that's not that they haven't listed everything. I've I've tried for years to get uh, all of the IMBD stuff uh, corrected. Get them uh, on that because you, it needs to be on there. Everything because it's enormous. But you, uh, Sarah Fawcett, the 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 angel time cover. I mean. <laughs> Yeah. You're it's just diverse everywhere you you have uh worked with you did the the costuming for Kiss. Talk about that just a minute, would you? Okay, yeah. I had uh I had done a uh a cabaret, big cabaret production for the MGM Grand uh, in Reno and one of the numbers was a space number. And I went nuts on it. I mean I <laughs> I, uh, it's good I never did drugs because I don't know what that would end up being like. Because I did, uh, I did. Uh, it was a, a nude show, it was topless, and I did uh, nude female robots. <laughs> oh, how cool! Made, that were all made out of plastic. Yeah, it was it was pretty freaky. And then there was an underground scene with monsters, and yeah, it was it was really out there, especially for the time. I, I did it in 1975. And at that point, Cher, uh, Cher was going with Gene Simmons, uh, the, the lead in, in Kiss. Mm-hmm. They, were going, they were seeing each other. And Cher wanted, uh, Gene was getting ready to do the Dynasty Tour, which was going to be their farewell tour <laughs> in 1971 while they're still working. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, he was, gonna, he, he was doing the Dynasty Tour, and Cher wanted Bob Mackey, who did all of her clothes, mm-hmm. Yeah, she wanted Bob to do it, and so they met Bob, and Bob didn't want to do it. Hmm. He really didn't. And he told Gene, he said, "You know what you need to do?" He said, "You need to fly to Reno and look at the space number that Pete Menefee did." He said, "It's real freaky," and he said, "It's it's right up your alley," and of course Gene did. And Bob and I shared the same manager, Phyllis Rabb, and Phyllis oh. called me one day and. 
And I didn't know any of this. I didn't know anybody was talking to Gene, or I didn't even know they were doing a, another tour. And uh, Phyllis called and said, uh, uh, I have an offer for you to do the Dynasty tour for, for uh, a Kiss. And I said, well, how did that happen? And she explained the background to me that Cher had talked to Bob, and Bob had recommended me to Gene. So that's how that all happened. Well, they're, uh, the, the costumes are amazing. They really are. And the colors are just yeah, I wanted them, brilliant. I, I wanted them to look like cartoon characters. Yeah. So everything was done in, uh, and it was the first time, uh, 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 it was Jean's idea to use color. And uh, it was the first time that uh, they had ever worn color. Everything before that had been uh, uh, had been black and white and silver. Or black yeah. and silver. Well, the, the color did definitely did work. But you have done work with um, eye shows, pageants, uh, the Rockettes. <laughs> you have. That's what I I'm know. Saying. I know. It's just. It's, I, and, I and took everything. I've done you, ma- and, magicians. Oh, no, I don't think I had that I don't, in my notes. I don't think I had magicians. I missed oh, well, that I'll, one. <laughs> I'll, I'll spend, send some sketches from Siegfried and Roy's world tour. <laughs> Oh wait! Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, yeah, you did. I, that one. I, you I did. I did. That's right. Yeah, you did. Yeah. That's right. So I just didn't. I failed to put that in my notes. But just you've worked with legends, and you have your your sketches are incredible art. And uh, the when someone is born with these gifts, like you obviously were, um, and that you got to spend your career. Working on all this, your, some of your Vegas costumes, those headdresses alone just blow. Me. I'm a, I'm a clothes person, and this it's like <laughs> I want to wear those, you know. Yeah. I want to I want to wear that. But um, speaking of that, uh, for those of us that would be interested, is there a way? Are there places where your costuming may like be available to? to do you know that? You may not know. Um, to buy some of these costumes that you designed. If, oh, if you... no. Uh, the costumes are, well, they're all over the place because they're owned by uh, whoever bought them. And a lot of uh, uh, Shirley's uh, nightclub stuff that I had done for her, and, I mean, she kept all the costumes uh, oh, at okay. her house in Santa Monica. And uh, uh, all of her costumes uh, went to the to the Debbie Reynolds Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Thing and so yeah. they were all sold, and I I know in fact a lot of people have gotten in touch with me uh, to tell me that they have um, they have the uh, the costume and it, do I have a sketch that that matches it? Do I have the original sketch? Oh yeah, that would yeah that would be yeah. really nice. So but uh, and, uh, go ahead. Oh, and two three years ago uh, I I've I've kept almost everything. And uh, I, I started not worrying about it, but, it, you know, it just sacks up. So about three years <laughs> ago, I, I contacted uh, the, the Las Vegas Museum, the Nevada Museum, for all of Nevada, because I had designed a lot of Vegas shows, and I disown, designed Hollywood Hello in Reno. And I donated all the sketches there. And they're, they've all been curated. They're all online. Oh, people, go check it out. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it, definitely it, do that. It's under the Nevada Museum. And uh, uh, and you, I think you type my name in and, and all my stuff comes up. Oh, it will. Uh, I mean, along, you type along. in <laughs> Menifee, not just in the museum search box, but just on the Internet, everything comes up. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, I just want to touch on one particular dress, too, that, that I really like, and you've not kind of talked about it before, this dress you made for Linda Carter um, that is just so elegant and so delicate. Oh, the that, Hollywood dress, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that is Well, first of all, she's, she's a delight to dress because she's so beautiful. She's tall, uh, she's beautifully proportioned, and, and she's a, a terrific lady, very nice lady. But if you if you you want the dress in action, uh, type uh, uh, Linda Linda Carter body and soul, and I think it's called Thirties Medley. And again, okay. it's it's uh, <laughs> I, I'm afraid uh, 
it was during my freaky period because <laughs> what the number is <laughs> what the number is what the number is based on is uh, old Busby Berkeley movies. Okay. And the choreographer said, I want to do Busby Berkeley, but I want to do Busby Berkeley uh, in like 2025 or something. And uh, so all the dancers are in really freaky clothes. I mean, she's <laughs> she's in an elegant gown, but the, the kids are p- pumped into the next lot. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see that. I it's, can see, like, I, it's a great number. It's a wonderful, wonderful number. The whole show is... A body and it's called body and soul was the special and but anything uh, uh, didn't work out like you thought it would i mean i'm sure that's a that yeah of course but just anything in particular that if you had it to do over you would perhaps go a different way on oh a yeah well thing. yeah as as you as you get older and as you mature your your taste is different yeah. you know and 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 you you get exposed to a lot more stuff and uh, when I when I first did Jubilee, we did a number based on the Titanic, the sinking of the Titanic, and uh, and uh, Don Arden was the producer, and he had done it once before, so I had seen what another designer's take was on it, and the only thing I really wanted was I didn't want my stuff to look like Bill Campbell's, although his mm-hmm. stuff was beautiful, but I I wanted I wanted to make it my own number, yeah, and. Uh, I I I did but <laughs> the the I didn't I didn't want it to look like a historical number because you know it was a tits and feathers show. Right, you know? right. And you don't exactly. want people in in beige slickers in the open. <laughs> so, so I did I did them all in 1912 clothes, but it I mean first of all if they'd really been in Southampton in April of 1912 they all would have frozen their butts off. <laughs> And I did it all in pastels, uh, in very strong pastels, and um, and everybody loved it. It was terrific. But I I always looked at it, and I always called it my Walt Disney version of the Titanic. <laughs> it was just pretty. I mean, it it didn't, and 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 the clothes were done properly, but it 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 just didn't make sense. So in um, and I worked on on Jubilee forever. I mean, it was like an avocation. I started designing it in 78. We opened in 81. We had the fire in 81. We opened again in 82. Uh, then in 1994 uh, or 5, I think it was, uh, Don asked me to, re- to just redo the show, not redesign it, just redo it. And uh, so I was on a three-year contract. And then, of course, once I started working, he changed stuff. Well, let's do a new opening. Well, let's cut this and do that. Uh-huh. And so I redesigned the show for three years, and then in 2000, they they uh, they called me uh, to come up and look at the show like four or five times, and then recommend uh, what the the what needed to be changed, what needed to be freshened uh, for the next year. Uh, so I was essentially doing the budget, the wardrobe budget. And then oh. in nineteen, and then in two thousand twelve, they called me to redesign Titanic. Oh gosh! And and because uh, they hadn't used it, they hadn't used that number for a couple of years. They had had a a, a magic act in in its place. And I said oh, I'd love to, but I said I want to redesign it. I want to do it differently. Yeah. So I got a chance to to completely completely do it. Um, and and it it looked completely different. I I remember the the manager of the show looking looking at the sketches and saying, "Well, this is going to be a different number." And uh, but it was fun. It was it was great to do. I haven't been to Vegas in in a few years now, but it seems like the last time we were there, even the the vibe was was different with the shows. And I sort of oh, missed yeah. the the you know the. Uh, I don't even know how to say the big it. The production shows. Yeah, yes, P. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, and I they, know. Go ahead. They're all gone. I mean, they're all, they're yeah. all kind of not happening. Now, it's funny because when, when I when I teach uh, at colleges and stuff, uh, or or talk to young people who are, are want to design, uh, 
first of all, they look they look at my sketches like they're I'm I'm showing them cuneiform tablets from her <laughs> <laughs> because nobody nobody sketches anymore. They all work on computer. Well, that's too bad because that's yeah, I think it's I think mm-hmm. it's too bad, but um, uh, but also I, it's so strange because everything I show them doesn't exist anymore. Big production shows don't exist except in Europe. A uh, TV variety has not existed since the yeah. 80s. Yeah. Uh, big ice shows don't exist except uh, for holiday on ice in Europe. Yeah. So, and on cruise ships, there's some some are uh, still doing them on cruise ships. But yeah. you've even worked. You, see, oh, I've done. This, go ahead. Bob and I have both done cruise ships a lot. Oh, you have. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, starting in the 90s. Yeah. In fact, uh, when when COVID closed all the cruise ships down last year. I, I went nuts because I in Roy, with Royal Caribbean uh, cruises I had fifteen ice shows on thirteen ships. Okay, wow. Yeah, yeah. How do you do that? I mean, and and I've already said that to you privately about your work ethic and you, how do you multitask the way that you do? I it just I don't. It's unbelievable how you can manage. Have you have managed? All of these well, things. you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm always, I'm always uh, curious and excited about trying new stuff. Yes. I really am, and uh, I, and I guess I'm kind of greedy. You know, I want to, <laughs> I want to, I want to do everything. I love you know. your honesty. <laughs> well, you know, I guess, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it goes all the way back to being a dancer. You know, dancing is essentially. A, a competitive uh, mm-hmm. situation for all yeah. of us. Yeah. You know, you can go in a room, and there could be three hundred guys, and they want four. You know, mm-hmm. so you know, you yeah. just work your ass off and try to impress people. But you take it to a whole. You just notch it up a little bit because you um, work in Russia, and correct me yeah. if I'm wrong on this. On this, uh, but you did have some Russian. So you spoke a, enough, yeah. a little bit of Russian uh, oh, I when spoke you were enough, working. And I, uh, and I could write it and stuff. Uh, it, it was funny because uh, uh, I I had a, a really good education. Uh, I started out in parochial school um, and uh, uh, and transferred to a regular high school when I was in in. Uh, in high school, when I was in ninth grade, and they tested us then. And at that point, uh, I tested first year college wow. you know, level. This was in ninth grade. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. And uh, so they put me in a specials class, and uh, there were thirty or thirty two of us, I think. And we we took two extra two extra classes a day. We went two extra hours. And we doubled in everything. We doubled in languages and, and maths and science and uh, uh, every, I mean, literally everything. It was great. And uh, they taught us speed reading. Uh, I took my, my college prep, prep exam, uh, my SATs, every year from my sophomore year on wow. just to show us, how, you know, what they'd be yeah. like. Right. And uh, in, in uh, when I was a sophomore, Sputnik went up and uh, – they started offering, they thought Russian would be a really important language, mm-hmm. and they started offering it at high school. So I was already taking Spanish, and uh, uh, I wanted to take Russian as my second language. And uh, I took it for three years, and then when I went to college, my dad, my my mom had passed away when I was in high school. Oh, and when God. I was offered Westside, my dad ter- made me turn it down originally because he wanted me to finish high school. Yeah. And the deal I made with my dad was uh, that I would I would do one year of college and, and at least give college a try. So uh, I, I, uh, I went to college, and, uh, and I went to college with Raquel, with Raquel Welsh. <laughs> she was See, so beautiful. Everything you do touches something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so weird. But uh, uh, but my major was was Slavics, and my minor was political science. Uh, oh, I heavy! Thought at, I thought at that point I wanted to be a political interpreter. 
Oh, and uh, okay. then they called again with Westside, and I said to my dad, I really want to try this and see if I can make a living doing it. And guess what? You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you certainly have. Oh, Pete Menifee, what a what a joy this has been. I have admired you and your work for a very long time. Oh, thank um, you. Your dancing, your your movies, um, and your Emmy winning uh, costume designs. It's uh, it. I want to encourage everyone to to Google Pete Menifee. And uh, and look at his career. And, and I want you, Pete Menifee, to get them to update Internet Movie Database because <laughs> your career needs all the credit that's coming due to you. Uh, Is there anything else you want people to know that I have failed? To, uh, let me, I'll answer that, and then you can answer it. I have failed to mention a, a ton of stuff about Pete Menifee. But uh, is there anything in particular that you would like to say before we go? Well, uh I'm I'm eternally grateful for uh, all the chances that I got, um, and uh, and working with the people that uh, that I did, because it was really a, a first class all the way. And uh, I mean, when when Don Arden hi- hired me to do Hello Re- uh, Hello Hollywood Hello in Reno, uh, that opened the world for me. I all of a sudden. I mean, I had been building clothes in New York and Hollywood, which was terrific and working out of fabulous places. But all of a sudden, with that show, I was I was I was in Paris working with Maison Fabrier, uh, and they would they had their own feather farm in South Africa, <sighs> you know. And you'd go there a year and a half early and order order whatever feathers, show them the sketches. And tell them if you wanted male ostrich or female ostrich. Or Is there a stuff. difference, Pete? In the, yeah. In... yeah, the male ostrich of uh, the flues, uh, each little feather are wider, and they last longer. Okay. And, uh, so if I do a principal, and they look prettier. So if I if I were putting feathers on a principal woman, I would uh, very often say I want these all to be male ostrich. But I mean, it opened the whole world. I I was working with Swarovski in Czechoslovakia oh, on the wow. jewelry design. <laughs> so it was, I mean, it was it was just unbelievable. And yeah. uh, and I felt I was so blessed to be able to to experience all that. And, well, uh, I will say that people were also blessed to be able to work with wonderful Pete Menifee, mm-hmm. whether it's your dancing or your on-screen presence, your unforgettable role in Bob Birdie, that uh, just everyone knows that song, everyone knows that <laughs> singing, because it is absolutely memorable. Uh, so thank you for all that you have brought to entertainment and to uh, to beautify the world with all of your fabulous costume designs. You really, really are a master, and I know that you are still teaching. You love to to give back to the younger yeah. people oh, yeah. coming up, and that's so gracious of you and so generous of you, Pete. Yeah. Well, it's it's uh, it's lovely to work with the kids. I always worry that, you know, I had I had so many uh, fabulous things to do, and a lot of them don't exist anymore. So I I, I always hope that the kids have good careers and have fun and uh, make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, and, so they live, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, it's it's just it's uh, sobering to me uh, to see the, the, the lack of work for people these days. And, of course, you know, the past year mm. has been murder yeah. because as, as a dancer, you know, you're, you're – a year a year out of your life is is probably a lot of your career yeah you know and having yeah. and having no uh no theaters to work in and not being able to take class yeah you know it it's been it's, a devastating year in it so is. It's many just ways. so terrible it's so terrible yeah. i feel it so is. badly for everyone you too and, and, I really uh, do. It's it's changed all of our lives so much, and we're not even yeah. sure, you know, when um, when things will have any feeling of normalcy again. We're 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 getting there slowly, but still, yeah, it's it's, 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 it's taking uh, a toll. Yeah, yeah. I 
I had dinner with friends for the first time in over a year, uh, two Saturdays ago, and it was it was surreal. I mean, it was, you know, being with people in a restaurant <laughs> and having a meal you didn't cook yourself. <laughs> See, we was, have not been in a an enclosed restaurant in a year and so, over, and so and we're tomorrow at ten a.m. We will be. Fully vaccinated after our second shot. Oh, so, good! Congratulations. We're going to live it up. We're going to go inside a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, wait, yeah, for, yeah. wait for two. I think you have to wait for two weeks. That's our two week. That's our two week mark. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, how, that's terrific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we got it two weeks ago. So we're yeah we we had Moderna and so we're we're. I had Moderna we're, too. Yeah. Yeah. All good. All good. <laughs> Pete, thank you so much. I really, honestly, am so honored to have you on the oh. podcast. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's for, for sharing. It's been a pleasure. It's been so much fun. You are just delightful. And I just want to say that this man, Pete Menifee, has worked with icons and the greats in the industry. But what I want to say about him is that he is one of the iconic greats. Look him oh. up. Pete Menefee, M-E-N-E-F-E-E, and you will love what you see. Be sure to visit our website, northpalmbeachlife.com, where we will have photos not only of Pete Menefee himself, but you are going to draw, you are going to absolutely love the sketches that he was gracious enough to share with us so we can share with all of you. These podcasts always appear on our website, northpalmbeachlife.com, as well as iTunes, Spotify, and Pandora. Gary and I both appreciate you so very much for the support you give to us through our website and Gigi, that's me, in the 561. You are appreciated. Stay tuned.